probably the best way to understand me is to start where I started, which is I was a neuroscientist. The entire time I was studying neuroscience, I had these thoughts in my head. Could I improve people's memory? Could I help people make better decisions in their lives? And I got into the field of theoretical neuroscience, which is machine learning and AI and the brain and psychology all mashed up together. I wanted to maximize human potential. Maximizing human potential is the animating idea behind all of your work. Yes. And you're working on this book called The Tax on Being Different. It starts with this very core idea. Let's use big data and machine learning to take bias out of hiring. Gender, race, sexuality, absolutely. But also, did you need an Ivy League degree to get that job? You need a position filled. Who is the right person for that job? Take all of our human foibles off the table. What, what kind of discoveries did you make by pulling this research Well, there's together? some fascinating things. Uh, right off the bat, uh, we could look at, of all the people that our system said were truly great at their job, what we found is typically for every person that went to a top-tier school that had worked at a brand-name company, there were 10 to 100 times as many people in every job vertical that were just as good but didn't have those credentials. So right there, that's pretty big market inefficiency. And would suggest, right, that the way people go about hiring, especially in uh, the science-heavy Silicon Valley, was not the smartest thing to do and not also resulting in the best people. Well, here's something that may shock many people to hear but is really well-researched. Interviews tell you nothing about who you should hire. And yet, it's pretty much the fundamental core of how we hire people. So, Vivian, though, if I'm a hiring manager and I say to you, you know, I just want to work with people I like. I just want to hire somebody I like and who I think is going to fit into my workplace. What do you say to that person? I say, it sounds like you found a great drinking buddy, uh, but maybe not the best employee. Uh, but there's a simple truth to that, something that I think a lot of people miss, which is... Building a high-performance team comes with short-term costs. In a sense, you're right. If I need to deliver some high-priority project tomorrow, give me five best friends, right? They speak the same language. They know each other. But what you also get with them is a deep and profound inability to see beyond what you already believe. At a neural level, we can actually measure uh, the signature of bubble-type decision behavior. Uh, it essentially is the neural signature of not thinking critically. When someone like me says something, I just take it as truth. When someone who's different than me says something, I'm skeptical. Now, in pulling this information together in this book, you explored the idea that um, the people who are not such obvious candidates, who had not had the fancy degrees or the particular kind of education, were also suffering a, a bit of discrimination. So the tax on being different uh, comes from this very simple idea, which is we systematically found uh, across all jobs the people were being undervalued. A really great example of this started with the story of this guy named Jose Zamora. He was sending out 100 resumes a week and getting no responses. So he changed his name to Joe. And suddenly, Joe is getting job offers Jose wasn't. Put a male or female name at the top of an identical resume, and suddenly the male gets more job offers. It is a well-known phenomenon, but the brutal truth all the more highlighted in the current world context is people don't believe research. So I thought, what if I pulled out every single actual Joe and actual Jose in our data? 150,000 Joes, 100,000 Jose's. And I said, what does Jose need to get the same probability of a promotion for the same quality of work? Uh, in the tech industry, for example, Jose typically needed a master's degree or higher to be competitive with Joe with no degree at all. That's six years of education, six years of opportunity cost. That's software engineering salary. It's a lot of money. Um, in fact, it comes out to somewhere between half a million and a million dollars, just the money you have to put in as Jose to play the game. And what I saw was 
It was a tax on being different. Do you think you have experienced a tax on being different in your individual case? The day I came out publicly was the last day anyone asked me a math question. Just like that, suddenly, oh, it's she now. We don't ask her math questions. 15, 20 years later, I'm starting my first tech company. I've got two PhDs. I was pulling teeth. There are real costs to being transgender and being openly transgender, proud. Your kid has a cochlear implant, uh, is benefiting from the diabetes technology I developed. You got a job because of the software guild invented or you're using the education tools or any other thing I've ever been involved in. That happened because I'm me. Aren't you glad that someone had the chance to truly be themselves and turned it to the benefit of everyone else? What would it mean if everyone had that chance? Um, it really ties it all back together for me. So sure, I've, I've had my costs. I've lost opportunities for being me. Overwhelming me, my life is better. Um, not everyone is so privileged, though. Uh, this is my opportunity to pay it forward.